Hello and welcome back. Today we are in the 1.5.5 beta and we are going to be doing a starting steps video for Persia which got massively buffed during this iteration of the beta getting a ton of new resources and so now Persia not only has you know iron and coal in a vast in a majority of their states which is very very rare for a country they also have a ton of arable land with a ton of options and also a lot of unused arable land which is going to be very very strong with the reworked migration as well. Now Persia is uh, sitting in a kind of a unique spot in that it is very close to kind of the divide between, uh, you know, the east and the west. And so geographically speaking, uh, they're pretty nice because if you expand into the Sikh Empire, you can trade, uh, you know, with Qing here. And you can also trade over land uh, quite well into the Ottoman Empire. You can trade with Russia. There's a lot going in terms of your geographic position. Now, geographically also in the Middle East uh, tends to not be very good in the early game because it tends not to have a lot of wood. You don't have a lot of wood, except in your rainforest up here. That has a lot of wood. Uh, but, uh, you know, eventually later on, a ton of oil appears here, uh, you know, along this ridge, uh, and also in Iraq, of course. And so this will provide a ton of migration later on in the game. And so uh, what we will be focused on is primarily how Persia's, you know, new resources kind of breathe light into it uh, for the most part. Now, uh, kind of what's other going on, uh, they are, do start out, they did get nerfed. They are now on traditionalism, which is something you have to get off as quickly as possible. However, Persia can do the corn laws event very 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 easily so we will be talking about that uh, and that will allow us to reform uh, stuff very quickly they also do have uh, a Muslim uh, faith or devout group which is going to have uh, you know bonuses accordingly which is going to give authority which is normal but they are going to give conversion and so this is going to be a little bit of an interesting one uh, because I think that you can consider doing maybe a religious run but uh, the uh, the bonus for um, what is kind of normal, the uh, be fruitful and multiply is also really strong, but maybe you just really want to seek out getting a lot of authority, especially as migration has been changed to allow discriminated migration. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in. Now, the first thing you want to do in any run is decide if you want to engage in rerolling. The best reroll you can probably do for Persia is uh, getting their Shia Ulema uh, to be a abolitionist. That way you can try and abolish slave trade uh, before... Uh, before you roll your market liberal. For most countries, uh, it is exiling your landowners so that you can get both professional army as well as colonialism, but we are going to be replacing our landowner anyways with a market liberal using corn laws, and so uh, and we don't have colonialization anyways, so we won't be able to do anything with this guy, and so there is a chance that we want to try and re-roll this uh, Shia Ulema. Another thing we could do is we could just slot him out and exile him and see if we get an abolitionist instead, but we can keep restarting uh, just to see if we can try and get an abolitionist. So we'll take a couple restarts and we will be back with an abolitionist. So after a dozen or so rerolls, we do get our abolitionist here, but we're actually not going to be uh, trying to abolish slavery just immediately. Uh, but this guy will be useful for us down the road for abolishing slavery. Also, notably for most other countries that start off on serfdom, it is important to note that they do oppose serfdom with the abolitionist. This isn't going to matter for us uh, because we start with tenant farmers and the reason we don't want to just ban slavery straight away is we don't want to rev because we don't want to delete some of our military before we rev and we want to um, have our military for procking corn laws so we will look to proc corn laws and then go for slavery banned um, perhaps uh, but it might just be better to lean into the market liberal first instead but either way it is nice to have this in our back pocket for some time down the road making slavery easier for us to ban. Now, as far as our authority and taxes go, uh, we have a leader that starts out with the imperious trait, which is going to give minus decree cost. This, combined with the fact that we don't really have a robust economy at game start, you know, with a lot of consumer goods, is going to mean we're not going to put in a lot of consumption taxes initially, but we are going to transition to them very, very quickly with our authority. Instead, we are leaning on decrees, and we know we want to lean, uh, we want to build in uh, Tabriz early, so we have uh, a road maintenance edict as long as along with the resource edict there and uh, we have also put in uh, promote social mobility in every place that has coal and iron which as you notice and as we discussed earlier really a lot of um, you know the states in Persia now have both coal and iron and we are going to be constructing a lot in these places and so at least for the time being we will promote social mobility which will increase literacy which will increase um, the amount of tech spread we are getting uh, from just naturally which is going to be a large source of our 
our technology uh, to begin with. Now also here, uh, we need to talk about our technology. We start off relatively backward. What we're going to do is we're first gonna research stock exchange for the market access price impact. This also makes it par possible for us to roll market liberals, but we're gonna be able to force one anyways. And we are going to also, um, you know, kind of after that, unfortunately we don't have academia either. Um, if this starts not spreading to us though, when we unpause, we'll just switch to atmospheric engine. We're gonna research atmospheric engine roughly half the way, and then we are going to switch to going into lathe. And the reason we are doing this is because we know our natural spread will go cotton gin into lathe because it will always select the lowest tier tech. And in this case, they can select tier one. We then want our tech progress to go into atmospheric engine specifically. We cannot ensure that we will natural spread atmospheric engine. And so what we're instead doing is we're researching these ones first and then atmospheric engine. The reason we're not finishing atmospheric engine is because this is a tier two tech. And so it will require more uh, innovation in order to research as long as we have tier one techs on research. So we're gonna research atmospheric engine roughly halfway, and then we're gonna go cotton gin and delay and then finish atmospheric engine, then go mechanical tool and then go railroads, uh, water tube boiler, probably, uh, with uh, perhaps a little bit of a sensitivity towards maybe we want to go academia if it doesn't natural spread to us in good order, or, um, you know, if we start with natural spreading stock exchange, we won't go that instead. Now, as far as diplomacy, the diplomacy is very simple. We are scared. Uh, we are terrified because Russia does start off with a claim on, if I'm not mistaken, it's either Tabriz or uh, this province here, uh, and so uh, we want to play nice with them. We are going to move our interest from Central Asia into Arabia, um, although to be fair, Central Asia is maybe reasonable and so would um, so would it be, actually we're going to move our interest here uh, into the Caucasus instead, and we are just going to join Russia's side in any war that they declare, but as soon as we build a boat, we are going to declare an interest in Arabia, and this is going to be kind of where we start our expansion, and for the run, I think we are going to lean into going Pan-Arabia type of thing, even though it's not really necessarily that strong uh, areas to conquest, I think that'll be nice and themey, but the reason we're putting an interest in Caucasus is if Russia goes after Circassia or uh, the Caucasian uh, Imid it may mate. Uh, in that case, we will just join sides on them and we will uh, help override the fact that they uh, start off, generally speaking, with a belligerent attitude. They do not this time, which is quite nice. You can see we have return states on them. Uh, we might use that at some point, but for now, we're going to improve relations and improve relations with the Ottoman Empire. And also, we're not going to declare any wars. Uh, we do have a little bit of Diplo left, so we will take a look and we will look to improve relations with anyone who's particularly large. Great, uh, great Britain's a great one. Uh, because if we can get them as protective, maybe we can get them to help in a sort of play. As we mentioned earlier, we are going to be building here first. We're going to just build up five construction sectors and then look to, uh, you know, build up tooling, wood, and start to get into iron frame buildings uh, relatively quickly if we can, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a vibe. Joining Russia's market would help a lot for this, and this is probably going to be something we lead into, because if we're in the market, they will generally have good attitudes towards us. Uh, it might make it a little bit risky because they're likely to boot us out. Uh, you know, UK's market will be great as long as, you know, uh, the 1.5 in 1.5.5 specifically, because the East India Company, despite having migration controls, they're willing to migrate. Uh, but this is kind of what we're doing in regards to our authority at the start we're leaning in on social mobility very very temporarily we're gonna swap off those pretty quick especially as soon as we start building someplace else where we would rather have road edicts and then also uh, we are making sure that we try and play a little bit nice with Russia at Game Start and the Ottoman Empire, and we are not going to declare a starting war because we want our first war to be for either Mara or Bahrain, and we can't get to those because we don't have any boats, and we'd rather build construction sectors at Game Start than to build the boats. Notably about our tax level right now, the reason we have it at low taxes is because this puts us over the 90% threshold or the level 90 threshold, and this is going to give us uh, minus enactment time, not relevant right now because we're not passing a law, but the loyalists from uh, standard living increases, which is going to be nice. We are going to very, very quickly look to do something like this, uh, you know, as our construction sectors finish. But for now, we're just going to keep this in with the knowledge that we're going to increase taxes really, really quick here. And also the military wages is almost always good to have high uh, because it does give us a little bit on morale recovery. And, uh, you know, sometimes you forget to take it down, although really it's not that much morale recovery relative to, you know, the new things you are getting from mobilization. And as you get more of these morale recovery modifiers, it becomes less and less useful. So maybe 
maybe actually we don't want to pay the military a lot, but the thing is it's just so cheap. Ah, that's one construction sector. So we are going to instead lower the military taxes and make a little bit of a deviation, you know, for now, while the military is a relatively large portion of our economy because it is 50. Now we are going to want to mobilize soon. And the reason we want to mobilize is of course, these guys when mobilized consume grain. And so uh, we want them to consume grain. The reason we want them to consume grain is we need our grain to get over, uh, you know, plus 25%. It's currently plus 22. If we do this and encourage exports, we actually could probably just get it to 22 just by exporting to a bunch of people and then unpausing. So let's try that. And the whole thing is we are trying to proc corn laws. We're going to delete all those export routes. It's at plus 30. We have uh, it to be, we need to be prioritizing export. We are, and we should hit this journal entry for corn laws which requires that's not the one which requires uh that we have uh, more than 25 percent expensive than base price corn which can be prohibitive for going corn laws you can't go corn laws with great chin because their grain is too cheap but we do not have that we are prioritizing exports and then the landowners are powerful they're a part of government and so we will get the corn laws if we just let the game tick to monday i'm assuming uh that's what it is waiting for and we get the corn laws and now that we have corn laws um we don't need to keep the prices low anymore so we will just get rid of this but we do need to keep the export prioritization on grain and so this is going to make us get a market liberal landowner through the event chain which is very very critical because the market liberal will support us getting off of traditionalism he'll support laissez-faire so we're going to go laissez-faire he'll also support free trade and so this will allow us to reform the economy very very quickly as persia uh which is not something that is available to every starting nation because some nations it's just too co hard to go corn laws but for us we will be doing the corn. So the increasing construction sectors, along with us actually swapping over the PM on here to using hardwood, so we could swap up to using luxury furniture, has made softwood expensive in the market. Um, this is going to be uh, a little bit of a problem, except we want to play nice with Russia. Russia will have cheaper softwood, and so we will look to import softwood from Russia. And then also, we are going to put in import prioritization. Throughout the entire game, we will have less access to wood than normal, and so we will want to just kind of lean on importing wood even though you know wood is extremely strong um to, for us to build we just don't have a lot of access to it and so this will help to bring down the price and smooth this out as we are building our construction sectors here following that the first thing we're going to build is a tooling workshop and the thing is is what you want to do is you want to try and move towards ownership that is going to be capitalist oriented we're not going to build a lot of agrarian stuff and we instead want to get stuff from merchant guild owns to privately own and in order to do that we have to switch from simple forest on the wood uh, to the sawmills which will require us to have uh, you know uh, tools uh, and these tools in turn we will need to get these onto wrought iron tools and so very quickly we will have this loop of uh, iron tools and wood that is supporting our construction when we switch to iron frame construction then very critically once we get atmospheric engine coal will be introduced into the mix because the atmospheric engine pump involves coal and so this is why it's critical that we have coal and iron in states because of local prices now, the way local prices work is if there is a, a local, you know, oversupply of something or undersupply, uh, what it will do uh, here, there's an oversupply of luxury uh, clothes. What it will do is it will increase the price. We don't want it, the price to be uh, or sorry, there is a under there's an oversupply. So it's going to decrease the price. Apologies. Um, we don't want this because this province, we would rather the price actually be higher because we have a ton of sell orders for this. Uh, and so our weekly balance is worse because this price has become depressed because there is a glut of these things. And so market access is uh, negatively affecting us in a pretty substantive way here um, because this is going to be sold at a lower price. Uh, the profits will be smaller because this minus this uh, is going to be your profits. And so this is bad. Also, when you have a shortage of good uh, in this case there will almost certainly be a shortage of wood uh, we have to pay more for it so our construction sectors we are having to pay at the local price which is more expensive which again doesn't benefit us relative to the market price and so what you want is you want to be able to produce the goods locally so that you everything's balanced as it should be uh, and so what will this is what we want to do and we will eventually be wanting to have all of our construction all in places that have stuff that can support our construction which 
on iron frame buildings is going to be tools, which eventually will require steel, which will require, you know, both coal and iron. Uh, fabric, this is going to be, we're going to lean on imports for this. Wood, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of wood and iron. And so really it's going to be about tools, coal, and iron. And so this is going to be why it's critically important for us to have tools in so many, or sorry, iron and coal in so many places. And here we have also the modern conservative event. This is the one we care about. A new figure has risen in the ranks of the landowners. Very fortunate for us to have rolled this on our very first event. There's a bunch of events. They're not that uh, critical. You will only roll this event once, so you do have to collect the, uh, you know, the correct, you have to select the correct choice, and you have to select an inspiration for our age, um, a new character or a character appears in Persia, and we will get a market liberal landowner agitator and so if you take a look here this homeboy is an agitator you do have to have an agitator slot uh, available and this is going to be uh allow you to get onto laissez-faire uh child labor allowed free trade uh, uh, commercialized agriculture all of these but very critically for us laissez-faire and also free trade now i do believe you need the voice of the people uh uh DLC in order to do this interaction, but you want to grant leadership to him, and so now he is going to be in charge of everything, and he is greatly loved, so this is fantastic, and he is in charge of the interest group, which has a ton of, uh, you know, it has a ton of clout, and also, notice, he is also more compatible with this abolitionist, uh, and so now we can actually increase taxes and still be legitimate, we can increase taxes and still be legitimate, and this will also give us a modifier we actually kind of like, which is minus, uh, uh, attraction of interest groups in government minus 20% since we don't really like the landowners anyways but they will temporarily suit our needs because we are going to be able to go laissez-faire right now and so we will get a fast enactment and on the back of that since we are so legitimate um, when you stack modifiers for plus and or minus enactment time the more modifiers of these you have the better they are uh because you know your first one there's minus 25 percent it will cut uh down the uh you know the amount by 25 percent exactly 100 minus 25 it's coming down 25 percent okay but if we're already at 75 percent and we get another minus 25 percent the amount of time it's going to take is actually minus 33 percent right uh because it's minusing a third of the remaining amount and so when you stack more of these modifiers they are going to be better so what we are going to do is we are going to come in here we're going to come into our decrees and we are going to get rid of all the social mobility except for i think the one uh, here in Tabriz, because this is where we're building primarily, and this is going to give us minus 22% enactment time, so we will have a faster laissez-faire. The reason why this is critical, as we just discussed local prices, local prices are influenced by something called MAPI, Market Access Price Impact. You see here, this gives us minus 15% market access uh, price impact, which is going to make all the effects of stuff having a glut of stuff, or a shortage of stuff, like we have wood, it makes all of these effects much more pronounced, because if we come in here, we see we are getting six 60% from the market price. As this number comes up, which traditionalism is bringing this number down, as this number comes up, more of the price will be informed by the market price, which is going to be preferable for us because when we are consuming a lot of wood here, and here specifically, this increases the local price, but not the market price. And it will increase the market price a little bit. But instead informing it through the market price is going to make it so our trade route with Russia, which only decreases the market price of wood, is going to inform a greater amount of the local price, and so we are local wood consumption will be at lower price, and we're consuming a ton of wood here, and namely, we're consuming in the construction sector, so this will make our construction cheaper here, and this is why it's so critical to, you know, both start off with stock exchange, which is giving minus market access price impact, and also get off traditionalism so fast, um, but we can do that very, very quickly, you know, here as Persia with our current opening strategy of, you know, using the corn laws to force a market liberal and then uh, trying to pass it as quickly as possible, which is why we're going to float the authority. Later on in the game, floating authority gets a lot worse as you start to get a really big consumer base. But when your SOL is really low, taxing the consumer goods, it's really not that great. We don't even have enough uh, construction anyways to, and we're only building construction right now. We don't have enough construction anyways to really have 
have a negative balance. And so, um, you know, getting onto laissez-faire faster will be a preferable thing. And then we can think about maybe going abolitionist, especially if we can join a war on Russia's side and get into, um, you know, one get into their market or get them to like us or this sort of thing. And so this will be preferable. And we will also try and do a large amount of trade with uh, Russia. To that end, we actually uh, want to now come in and instead uh, prioritize this, which will end the corn laws. And it will also give us, let the grain trade begin, and we get more loyalists, a lot more loyalists, which is going to be nice. Uh, but we can also come in here and we can look in uh, the we want to look in the Russian market, we are going to import grain from the Russian market. Now, this might not be the very best import, but we want to decrease the price of grain to raise us well. And also, um, we want to increase volume of trade with Russia. We will do the same with fabric if we can, and we can have a profitable route. And so we will now have three trade routes where we are importing. Um, we don't, well, I guess we don't hate exporting this to Afghanistan, but we don't really need it. And we are running a uh, bureaucracy malice, so we will cancel this one and we will this is also probably fine that we're running a route exporting wine to Russia because specifically we have Muslim pops they don't like the alcohol they won't consume it and so this will make the buildings actually profitable but we now have a decent volume of trade with Russia which will hopefully hopefully keep their fingers out of our pies all right so we're hitting the upper edge of our you know gold reserves that we can have and you don't want to ever really be in the max of this you don't want to hit your reserve limit because then money gets erased entirely from the economy so we're actually just going to rake the taxes back down temporarily with the understanding that we are going to very very quickly ratchet them up as more construction comes in we decided to add a level one construction sector in three more provinces here uh they don't have you know the construction sector bonus but this will smooth out our transition to iron frame a little bit uh uh, because what we will do is when we start switching to iron frame, we will swap some of the level one construction sectors instead of the level five, and this will kind of ease things up a little bit. We do have the tooling workshop in Tabriz uh, being the first thing we are going to complete, and we get two nice ticks on laissez faire. And so, you know, it's still 36, and we've almost passed laissez faire, uh, you know, starting from a position where we couldn't get any support from it at game start uh, through these corn laws. And this is why corn laws is just such a powerful thing. You know, we are about to ticket. And this is also why we're floating the authority. I think once we get laissez-faire, we'll probably stop floating this authority and, st and instead use it on consumption taxes or edicts. We get the big nice, the 333, uh, you know, just the very quickly. So we did high roll this, but now we have laissez-faire and uh, we haven't even finished stock exchange. So we can't even go free trade if we wanted to here um, because uh, our boyo, uh, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. But uh, we can now maybe think about going slavery ban because the landowners are so, so happy happy that we passed laissez-faire, which they normally don't support, uh, which is why, you know, rolling for the abolitionists, the game hasn't even gone one year yet, and now we can use these guys uh, in order to uh, try and abolish slavery. Now, we are going to lose the bonuses from the landowners, boo-hoo. Uh, this is actually, you know, relatively substantive uh, because, you know, your investment pool, your reinvestment, we're getting 5k, a majority of it is from sub-farms, and so we're going to lose this 20% bonus, but it really only amounts to like 400, and we do want to get off of slavery, and now's a really good opportunity before we get stock exchange because we will go stock exchange next and so we will just uh you know go after slavery banned just banning it right off the bat uh we of course are still max legitimacy and we will still pass laws really quickly and now we get some loyalty from the intelligentsia which is nice going to give us some migration attraction and society t research speed which is going to be nice because we're researching stock exchange actively right now seven to ten months left uh but uh we're just kind of or i guess we are one year into the game uh but we have gotten laissez-faire and we are well on our way to reforming the economy notably we no longer have traditionalism so when we looked at the mappy before it was 60 now it's 75 which is also going to make all of our buildings more profitable because it always positively well it's not going to make every building more profitable but in the aggregate everything is going to be better uh because more market at price uh market price is always preferable to local prices and so this is going to be the big nice so the state of kerman has natural or natural harbors so we eventually do want to build uh kind of all of our port stuff here again caring about local prices since we know we want to build our ports here and our shipyards here because they are getting the the shipyard building throughput and our military shipyard throughput we are going to put our first boat here uh we only need one boat in a dream we do want to get expanding kind of early so we will first uh kind of go through the 
this user interface. We'll create a fleet here, and then we will add to the fleet in this province specifically. Now, what we are going to do is we added another construction sector to, to Breeze, but we are going to build, uh, after we finish the construction sector, we're going to build this naval base, then we're going to build the tooling workshop, and then we are going to probably push iron mines to level 11 here in Tabriz. That way we can make use of our uh, company slot, which we currently don't have a pot potential company. Um, we're going to focus on the iron mines, we're going to get the wood from Russia, and we are going to look to use this to both, you know, power our ability to swap onto the capitalist own wrought iron tools here uh, in Tabriz, but also because uh, the capitalists will give 20% of their money to the investment pool instead of just 5% from the shopkeepers. Uh, important to note. But also what this will do um, is it will allow us to focus on iron specifically at first. We are importing wood from Russia, and so as our wood needs go up, uh, you know, our import level should go up with Russia, which will in turn increase trade volume with them, which is going to be nice, and hopefully they come off of cautious soon. Uh, but if not, uh, once we finish our boat, we will probably switch our uh, diplomacy interest to instead be in Arabia instead of the Caucasus. That way we can, uh, you know, look to get some level of expansion going here, uh, you know, because if you're not using your infamy decay, you're losing it. But Russia, you know, kind of being aggressive against you and Ottomans being aggressive against you, pretty consistently they will join plays against you and so that's why we are chilling which normally we don't do at game start okay here we have an event that is a little bit interesting we still have above uh we still are floating all this authority we still have above 90 percent legitimacy which is giving us minus enactment time so we have minus 25 percent enactment time minus 22 per percent enactment time and as we suggested earlier it is better when you get more and more of this it's more valuable the more of it you give uh so currently we have roughly minus 50 percent you know the first minus 25 percent that cut it by 25%, but the second cut it by 33%, right? Because it's effectively, again, you're uh, you're decreasing from that 75 to 50, so that's cutting out a third of the remainder. Here we have an event that is going to give us uh, time is of the essence. Now, the landowners don't like this, but minus 20% enactment time, when we already have minus, what is it, 47% enactment time, will be minus... Uh, 67% enactment time, so we will absolutely fly through the enactment of Slavery Ban. Now, it does make the landowners unhappy, but you can see just absolutely how fast this is cranking up. It is obscene. You know, hide your kids, because this is a, this should not be allowed, um, and we will just get very, very fast ticks. Hopefully we get a tick that will give us, you know, enactment chance, uh, because 17% is not particularly high. This is the opposite of what we asked for. I suppose we'll go for this one, uh, and just hope we high roll, and we do. Big luck, sack. And so, you know, this will allow us to ban slavery very, very quickly as well. This is also critically why we're not spending our authority right now. Um, you know, if we were below 90% uh, and we didn't have this event, of course we'd spend our authority. But, uh, you know, with how righteous we are right now, righteous, uh, we will be, of course, uh, you know, trying to uh, work on this as fast as we can. And also, bannering slavery will be nice. So we get a little bit unlucky rolling two setbacks in a row here, uh, but we rolled them really Really fast. Um, also, we have moved our interest from the Caucasus to Arabia now that we have finished our boat, and so we will be doing that. We are going to handle, uh, you know, our minus tax waste because it is becoming a little bit prohibitive at this point. Um, we are going to handle it after building a tooling workshop and an iron mine, uh, but that's what we are going to look to get down next. Uh, but once we have uh, this war declared in Mara, what we can do is we can just move the interest back to the Caucasus so that we can join if Russia decides to start anything, and we will gain a native interest here in Arabia once we finish up this war. And so this is going to allow us to continue to expand in Arabia because we will have a native interest because we have grabbed some land and while still kind of hovering over. And we research stock exchange here, which is going to move the mappy from 75, uh, you know, so we started at 60, now we went to, then we went to 75 and now we're at 85. So this is going to help things out a lot. And one of the reasons we're suffering so much is really, really high wood prices. We have started importing from more people. Uh, but this is going to, you know, we can just get rid of this. This is probably not even worth it for the the shortage on our uh, mana wars. Uh, this is not a big deal. Uh, but we are importing wood from more people now. It's not really something we can supply too terribly well ourselves. But once we finish the tools, we will be able to get more wood because we will be swapping all of our wood onto, uh, you know, sawmills, which will produce a double the amount of softwood and so that'll help out quite a bit which is why we are kind of prioritizing uh the tooling workshop and the iron over in fact uh handling this bureaucracy interest uh, thing which is deleting money from the economy tax waste just deletes money from the economy generally you don't want to float it but let's see what we get we get of course a bad uh, tick here 
which is really hurting. We're gonna take the minus five bureaucracy in for a penny, in for a pound of flesh. So we've continued to roll poorly on banning slavery, which is unfortunate, but of course is likely because, um, you know, we have a really high stall chance from having opposing interest group, i.e. the landowners in government. And so this is the most probable thing. It is a bit unfortunate, uh, but it's also not the biggest deal. Uh, we can try and do free trade instead. Um, if we can't free the slaves, we can at least free the trade. So that's nice. All right, the bill and the dream of emancipation is dead here. We get down to zero with already having two setbacks. So we will just cancel this a bit unfortunate but also not the biggest deal because again we can still do a useful law pass in uh you know whoop, if we can click correctly in passing free trade now that being said which will also you know kind of help with this problem that being said um while we are going on free trade we're less it's less important that we float all this authority so i think what we're going to do is we are going to kind of change things up a little bit and we're going to look to bolster the industrialists look to get them uh the clout up i think we could bolster the intelligentsia and this wouldn't be insane uh but let's take a look at how much we can get from our consumption taxes now it's still not too terribly great you know relative to uh what's going on with the economy but why don't we just tax a couple luxuries uh, actually let's tax one let's Let's increase this to give us a little bit more access to authority here and then let's bolster the intelligentsia here uh, and then come back in and lower the taxes back down also we land Mara pretty easily and enforce on them so we will have to look around for another war probably on Bahrain um, and we're just gonna tech uh, yeah well they're still chilling Russia almost always goes for these guys so if you do want to get good relations with Russia uh, putting an interest in the Caucasus is a good idea just so you can join on their side we actually decided to go for Cathedral Theory instead, uh, mainly because I think that protectorating both the Quasman state and Lahej is a good idea, and we kind of want to get rolling on that a little bit earlier. Bahrain is better, but it's better in the long run, and uh, of course we work towards the common goal. The landowners, uh, we don't want to really... Uh... Yeah, we're going to do this one. Uh, but uh, we will just have an adjacency now with uh, both the Quasimid State and Lahej. And so getting them will be easy. We'll make them protectorates. We also want to do a crew a little bit more infamy than taking Bahrain. And by making these guys subjects and then, you know, slowly integrating them, um, we can make use of their construction. And what I mean is they have 10 base construction. We have 28 construction and we're hemorrhaging money. They will build stuff with their base 10 construction. Uh, and since this is such a high proportion of of you know relative to our construction you know it might make more sense to let them have the free 10 construction and in a sense since we'll annex them eventually it's giving us 10 free construction or at least 10 free construction into our market they will build stuff they will build like these lead mines except there aren't any lead mines there and this is very much the idea there are lead mines there and so hopefully this helps out a little bit as we you know look to uh satisfy some arabian ambitions so because wood is nearly plus 75 in our market uh in terms of price uh we did expand uh, the wood a little bit more before finishing our bureaucratic administrations really don't want to be running this but it's kind of a, a sticky situation where we were trying to increase construction at game start and so we really want to kind of lean into this we will put this on auto expand and expect to see another one of these in back we also were hoping to push the iron mines but we're just not getting enough to, like uh we're not bringing down the price enough from trade for us to not be producing wood and so what we are going to do is we are going to start um, you know cranking up this logging camp a little bit i think that we might even we could consider bringing this logging camp to level 11 to put slot in the logging company and this would maybe not be insane um we could also look to import hardwood and prioritize softwood production this would maybe be a little bit better but this is currently the adjustment we're making as we are going for uh the quasimid state here notably they actually have a decent population size uh well kind of decent and we have a lot of migration pull they have an attraction of 4.8 we have uh be, courtesy of our very nice persian land which has a bunch of unused arable land we have a lot more migration attraction than we otherwise normally would if we take a look here you can see you are getting a uh, migration attraction from unused arable land and so this will allow us to siphon off pops which in turn will make the annexation of these guys down the line uh, a lot better and this is one of the reasons we also really want in russia's market because they have a lot of pops they often get ching in their market and so we want those pops and we have the migration attraction you know to back that up and so uh, we are hoping to back it up into their market and uh, do that sort of thing. And we are enacting free trade as well.
pretty soon here. One thing that's probably worth noting is we are unrecognized in Persia, and as an unrecognized power, we make tributaries. And currently, what you do is once you have a tributary, you can turn them into a vassal, right? And so if we reduce autonomy here, uh, we would uh, make them into a vassal. When you are recognized, you have to actually go you protectorate, dominion, uh, puppet, annex, when you're unrecognized, you only have to go uh, from being, you know, a, what is it, a tributary into being a vassal into annex. So there's one fewer step. So it could be the case that we even want to stay unrecognized for a little bit. We could go for a recognition war against France uh, sometime in the near future, looking to just land Corsica, which is very easy to land, and then defend our borders against any landing from them. Uh, but uh, this is just something to keep in mind uh, in regards to kind of 1.5 changes regarding expansion. Is it might be better to actually expand as an unrecognized power especially if we just get these guys on the market we start siphoning off their pops if we take a look here we might even be able to see uh if they've had any sort of uh nope they're isolated uh state region uh and so they're isolated from the market i don't know how they're isolated from the market uh of course i don't know how yemen is isolated from the market you know having a port uh this is perhaps a little bit of a bug uh but they have a port and somehow they're isolated big sad we'll go for lahej here though uh and uh let's take a look uh at how much units they have they have no units so we will assign our small army uh to deal with them and make them uh you know a tributary uh so that we can vassalize them later so the industrialists finally demarginalized this is kind of on two fronts one we're bolstering them but two also everything we're building in from the iron uh you know to the tooling workshop well not the iron yet but the tooling workshops these are capitalist owned which are going to primarily be uh industrialist oriented and so this is one of the reasons why moving to this is such a big deal we don't have atmospheric engine so these are still merchant guild owns but also the logging camps we've been building which are very lucrative uh these are also privately owned because we have swapped to sawmills which is why going tools first is so important um but this is going to be bring us a couple things first we're going to get faster uh tech uh speaking of faster tech we are about halfway through atmospheric engine so we are going to swap over to lathe as per our strategy with the idea of getting atmospheric engine after so that's thing one but also, we are going to get more capitalist investment pool contribution efficiency. If we take a look at where our money, our reinvestment is coming from, our reinvestment is coming mainly from logging camps. And so this 10% will represent, you know, a little more juice in our pocket. So this will be nice. And finally, since this guy is still a market liberal boyo, we will actually be able to reform the government and put in the industrialists pretty well. Um, we are now going to drop down to contested. And so we are going to have minus oppo group uh, approval. Uh, uh, this is not necessarily, let's call it not ideal, but it is not too bad. Um, and we will be able to pass some laws that the uh, are preferred by the industrialists. Namely, we want to get on the land and voting. So we're going to go land and voting first. Uh, and this will help us to eat at the clout of uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, the patriarchy? No, of the landowners. And so by eating out the clout of, or e eating down the clout of the, the landowners, we will be able to, you know, uh, hopefully get onto parliamentary republic sometime but very importantly getting onto uh, landed voting is a, a very big step because generally when you're on landed voting um, what you can do is you can uh, slot out the landowners and still be legitimate currently there's like absolutely no chance we can do this and so we can't actually try and pass a law that would force them to rev and we are still waiting on being able to pass uh, you know slavery ban and this is probably going to be what we go for after going landed voting and we might even be able to maintain enough legitimacy that is 25 to pass it even if we spark a rev and if we get to that point we'll probably delete down all of our military except for that which is in the capital and force a rev and then uh you know look to go parliamentary slash uh you know some sort of voting and get the landowners out for good notably on the subject of balance we are an unrecognized power and as such we actually get pretty bad modifiers uh and we're even small we get pretty bad modifiers when it comes to you know floating any debt and so normally here's a spot where we would start trying to crank up the iron frame buildings a little bit we have one turned on to iron frame building we are not going to do that instead we are going to look to get rid of our negative balance before we upgrade any buildings because running a negative balance while really good when you are recognized and huge when you are un recognized and small not a good idea and so this would be a sacrifice that we kind of make um for the sake of you know getting cheaper infamy annexes overall perhaps you also pay more infamy for stuff when you're uh unrecognized and so uh 
maybe it's the case that uh, it's still not worth it. It's just faster. Um, but this is something to consider uh, and is also why we will not be ramping up construction for a little bit, even though we are having a positive balance. And the positive balance might even be a lie. Uh, we notably did build one coal mine as well for the purposes of being able to put on gas streetlights, which is going to give us a little bit of infra as well as, uh, you know, some more services. Um, if this is uh, enough to keep the coal mine, you know, employed, we'll just do this one. And if it's not, we can turn on other ones in the market as well. So we want to be a little bit careful about actually exporting um, sugar because we don't really want it to auto produce in our market. Um, but however, uh, generally, while you don't want to export agrarian goods, we do want to export liquor because we have a taboo against it anyways. We're going to export it to Russia. We're going to say buy liquor uh, because our pops have a taboo against it and this will allow it to be more profitable and we're kind of coming up on the point where we have enough of a bureaucracy balance that it will be good and also it'll be a little bit nice and so also we're going to see if we can export our iron the main reason being that we want to focus on iron we want to build that up to level 11 so that we actually can uh here let's just export it to egypt we want to build it to level 11 egypt by the way we are adjacent to in terms of market now through the quasmid state but we want to be able to build this mine to level 11 so we can slot in a company uh which is going to everything requires you know the level 11 for the uh or at least the uh, both the forestry one as well as the metal combine we want to be able to slot it in it requires greater than level 10 and we do not have enough uh demand in our local economy uh, but we can instead export to create demand which will make these more profitable so it will allow us to focus these up uh we will put in a tooling workshop our queue looks a little like this um you know kind of small things we are you know kind of still focusing on the logging really want to get off the logging because we really do want to switch to iron frame buildings but we just can't quite swing it also for whatever reason france decided to bankroll us um for a little bit i guess they're not doing it anymore um just a little bit of a thing and we're going after Kalat here um because uh, they have iron here. Uh, well, actually, we have a lot of iron now anyways because our resources are obscene, uh, but we can't go after Afghanistan because they're too big. Um, unfortunately, Sikh Empire did get annexed, or the Punjab, the important part, did get annexed. Uh, this is a state that would be nice to go for for the migration purposes because it has 14 million pops, and if you can siphon off those pops, that'll be big nice. Let's take a look and see if we have any migration coming in. Uh, we do not currently have any migration coming in. No cultural communities have formed from the places that we have pulled into our market. Notably, we cannot ask to join Russia's market now because we have subjects. Um, there is perhaps something to just annexing Quasimid State and Lahej instead of uh, subjugating them because now we are either... Um, going to have to wait for them to ask us or we are on our own we are hoping though that we are hoping we can get relations high enough uh and this attitude to shift on over in fact we're actually at the point where we can shift the attitude over because they have a play now we can just join this play raw uh, or we could ask for something that we can only ask for war goals. I don't think so. So what we're going to do is they want to return Circassia, conquer Dobruja, and uh, we're kind of fine with that. Uh, where's Dobruja even? Is that even like a reasonable... Uh, no, is it over here? Oh, I guess it's kind of a reasonable conquest. Uh, and conquest cars, which is right here. Russia doing Russian things, but we're just going to uh, join on their side. Uh, and we don't really care too much um, that they don't really need our help and won't really offer us anything because now they're genial. So now they are much less likely to mess with us, of course. Ottomans are likely to mess with us, but this isn't our problem, except it is. Uh, and we will be uh, probably switching on over to having this 43 stack on the Ottoman front and just having it on defense and kind of, for the most part, sitting the war out uh, because and just using this as a way to lever our ways into, uh, you know, Russia liking us. Except Prussia joins, so that's that's a little yikes. That's a little spooky. Now, now things are a little bit uncertain. Okay, expecting a little bit of a problem with uh, qualifications, we are going to make a slight adjustment. We are researching lathes. Uh, we already have a bunch of progress on atmospheric engine. We put the progress in, uh, knowing that we cannot force a natural spread on atmospheric engine, but we can guarantee it on lathe. We still know that we are going to have that spread lathe, so we're going to get it relatively quickly, but we're going to come in here and research academia. A big part of this is we do want the wealth, uh, the education per wealth, which is going to help a lot with qualifications, but also it will allow us to found universities, um, which, while not, we're not going to do a ton, because we're not 
our economy is not that big, we do we are going to put in a few. And so this is going to be a little bit of a slight adjustment. But again, we are going to kind of still be focused on getting into atmospheric engine at the very least. We will kind of take a look if we think we really need railroads. We'll probably go atmospheric engine mech tools, but we might go water tube boiler instead of railroads, depending uh, because as uh, as Persia, we can really spread things out. We don't have to build into Breeze because so many states have, you know, uh, this uh, this iron and coal. Unfortunately, they don't have an enormous amount of infrastructure, and so lacking a bunch of infrastructure, we probably will have to go uh, a little bit of a rush for railroads, but we will make that little bit of an audible uh, to pick up academia first because I am anticipating uh, that we are going to run into problems relatively soon in employing up uh, because we have, a, we have both national supremacy and we have low literacy which is not going to be the best although our literacy is not too bad it's not too bad do we have a oh i think we start with the schools is why uh i thought we started with yeah we start with the schools but we don't start with uh the uh what is it the we start with religious schools but we don't start with the healthcare. i thought it was the other way around uh in which case maybe this actually isn't too big a concern but this is uh perhaps something you want to think about for some of your runs when you're starting on relatively backward countries i think we actually will go academia but um it's perhaps not as necessary and then we'll go for the atmospheric engine here okay for this war we're just defending on the fronts uh it's looking like russia's going to enforce on circassia but maybe he's not going to enforce on the ottomans we don't really care uh how that pulls out uh, but what we are going to do is uh we are kind of in a weird spot where we want to really turn this up now. Uh, we are making a decent amount of money. We have a decent amount of reserves. So we're going to turn this on the iron frame buildings. However, as you can see, instant shortage. Uh, we are going to help resolve this shortage by first canceling our trade route to Egypt, uh, which of course is no longer going to really be uh, that useful. But also we are going to try and, uh, you know, do a little bit of trade with Russia. Now we are working on, we have a tooling workshop in the queue, which will help us to, you know, avoid the shortage uh, but we are going to, on a very temporary basis, look to import from Russia uh, both iron and tools and then get rid of these trade routes kind of once we resolve uh, some of our own stuff. And by increasing the volume of trade, we are hoping to eventually get a trade agreement. Now, we do have to, I believe, um, we... Yeah, so we're close. We just need more volume uh, for the most part, uh, or I guess we already have a lot of volume. We already have plus 50 from that. Uh, but if we can get them to cordial, which will be pretty soon here, um, then we can... Oh, just kidding. They love it. We're in on a trade agreement uh, off the back of that, uh, which is going to decrease our bureaucracy costs and make it not such a big deal that we're importing. We do, of course, want to lean into eventually producing this stuff ourselves, um, but uh, this is going to be good for us. And this, again, will let us push. I think here... We're going to put in the other seven here and just look to push this up. Uh, we will probably interpose another one of these somewhere uh, kind of... Uh We'll kick a couple of these to the bottom, so we'll go, you know, some iron mines, some tooling workshops, and then some iron mines again, and then we will look to swap the remaining two construction sectors on over to iron frame buildings. It's important whenever you make this iron frame transition that you kind of do it slowly and you don't try and swap it all at once because swapping it all at once is not going to be a good time. Uh, it looks like Circassia is going to get enforced on. I don't know if they're going to ever push into us. I think that they can't. Um, even though we have a regular infantry, the defense is really strong, and on the 1.5.5 uh, beta uh, people do not have uh, you know any cannons and the AI doesn't really know how to build uh, as many as they should and so you know we're just going to keep defending here and let um, let our infamy decay down if it becomes zero we'll think about leaving this war but right now we don't need to leave and well actually but we do have already what we want really from this entire joining Russia in a war thing. So maybe we'll look for a war. And the thing that we wanted was to get the trade agreement so that we would get the ticking positive relations on top of our improved relations uh, so that they don't, you know, uh, come clap us. Ideally, they still might, but it's less likely. Silly me, I realized why we had no market access in Yemen, and this is not something I'm normally used to dealing with, is we didn't have a single port. We didn't have a single port anywhere, and you need to connect two ports, and since we don't start with a port, which is, you know, not a very common occurrence uh, with most countries, we didn't have a port to connect to. So we are, of course, going to build a port in Kerman, uh, which is going to be the better, or that's going to be the best place, because they do have this bonus here, and eventually we will 
will upgrade the ports, but this will allow us to connect uh, kind of this Omani territory, which is currently not connected, and once connected, we can siphon off their pots. So we decided to just capitulate out of the war, and notably, uh, you know, with current balance, uh, you take a ton of casualties just from sitting on the line, and maybe this is something we should have considered, maybe we should have capitulated out just as soon as we got the trade agreement with Russia, uh, which was the main thing we were after. However, what we will do now is we will take a moment to kind of reconsolidate stuff, because almost all of our battalions are at like 100 or 10 percent strength and so we will mainly i think just chill uh but we will take this moment to kind of look and see where we have uh you know uh barracks and stuff and look to uh kind of uh downsize a couple of these uh you know the ones that are above five i think we're just going to downsize to five and the ones that are below five i think we're just going to straight up delete uh and look to uh you know downsize quite a bit uh in this regard and have a bit more of a lean military especially because all of these are infantry we do want a mix of infantry and artillery uh in our eventual armies and so uh we can afford to size these down and now's a, a good time to kind of allow for a recomposition of units because we will instead probably build up some artillery and or lancers uh to make up for you know what we're deleting here also it'll free up a little bit of money because we are paying a little bit of goods for uh, military buildings and mill wages. Of course, this is probably why we were making so much money, because so many of our guys died. Because um, it's not a lot. Uh, but this will uh, prevent it from like bumping up too much uh, coming on up here. Also in the veins of recomping our army, we are increasing uh, or we're creating a level 5 Lancer unit uh, for the purposes of landing. This will allow us to expand elsewhere. Uh, we notably don't really need to have float the interest in Circassia anymore. And we didn't as soon as we needed to join the war so we could move it around. So we are going to look to expand elsewhere, kind of moving forward uh, to some extent, uh, having expanded a little bit here in Arabia. But also, to, in order to help them land, we are going to recruit the frigates up to level 5, which is a little bit of a concern. We're, of course, recruiting them here, and we do have military shipyards and a shipyard coming in here because this is, in particular, where we want it because we are going to have the shipyards building bonus. Now, also, coming in, looking at landed voting, there's not really any oppo to this, and so it's not really such a big deal that we are getting this extra 8%, and instead, we would rather be much more legitimate, so we're going to do this little maneuver here, and so we can have a righteous government. We did need the industrialists in order to seed this, but we've rolled enough positive events that we have so much enactment chance. 50% uh, that we don't really need the industrialists anymore and we would prefer having uh, you know a more righteous government on top of this is giving minus attraction or sorry that's not giving minus attraction this is giving minus attraction of interest groups in government and we want the industrialists to be strong anyways and so might as well just uh, kind of slot it in like this and be more legitimate and uh, you know help to move down the clout of the landowners which is going to be relatively sticky probably after this we go for banning slavery uh, but there also is a movement uh, for legacy slavery which is maybe going to be a little bit better than just banning it outright if it manages to generate more support we're going to join a Russian war again for free uh, offering them nothing because we don't really have that much to offer to be fair uh, because they've dipped down to cautious we do want to make sure that their attitude stays high uh, we have also gone after Bahrain here looking to enforce on them but we aren't going to really be able to make any moves uh, you know while our military recruits up and so despite the fact that we have zero infamy um, we're just gonna you know if you're not using your infamy decay generally you're losing it but we do want to wait for our you know our cavalry units to recruit up uh, a few Lancers and I think after that we go for Brunei um, which is is going to be nice and then also Gaza is going to also be nice uh, allowing us to get into Transvaal and Orania and so this is kind of going to be the expansion plan moving forward from here uh, after we annex Bahrain but for now we'll just chill with Russia we'll be on their side and they will love us for it and be genial instead we could join their customs union if we didn't have any subjects but unfortunately we have subjects maybe a little bit of an improvement on this uh, kind of way of playing would have been to uh, uh, instead be uh, not have taken any subjects and instead just gone for annexation because we have three subjects now or four subjects Kalat, Bahrain, Quasimid State, and Lahej. Um, so this is actually probably would be an improvement just to be able to get in the Russian market. Um, yeah, I, I think that was a little bit of a miss on our part, uh, or my part rather. 
and so this would have been better hopefully they just ask us and if they ask us that'll be good for us we can't go for a slavery band yet the landowners do oppose it to level 11 minus 11 as well uh, because they're no longer super happy with us from passing you know laissez-faire and such um it's decayed down so i think that we will just go for legacy slavery uh and it also has a movement for it which is going to be nice uh and so i think we will also slot in our ulema who is an abolitionist uh in order to try and get this through a little bit better um which is going to help out also landed voting notably does make us a lot less legitimate in the aggregate and so we will be wanting to oh these guys want to join the free part trade party no not like this you really don't want to be below 50 percent here uh, but the sunni ulema really is a huge portion of our clout so we're going to decrease the taxes unfortunately um and we are getting to the point where i think we can actually swap up the rest of our buildings onto here so we will do that um, we notably have a bunch of iron mines coming in still and they are still able to employ up which is definitely very nice but once we get to 11 we will be able to put in the company we have war but we're not going to do anything about it russia will surely stomp them and hopefully they invite them to the customs union um yeah a little bit of a miss on our part there okay now that we have our first election finishing we should be a little bit more legitimate and we are still uh we're at a break point so we are going to have the lower taxes uh, because we would dip down to 74 if we didn't uh but this is going to be significantly more legitimate uh, we do see uh the clout also get distributed a little bit away from the landowners unfortunately away from the ulema and it's going to be kind of a little bit more on this side uh but we are kind of you know progressing had a little bit of a low roll for getting the slavery band and then we get a little bit of a peace treaty hopefully they maintain genial um there is some stickiness in this regard but often they can just change but i think since we didn't abandon them mid-war like we did with the last one they might be stuck in on genial and we are hoping to see a customs union invitation from them while our army is recruiting up here so we did just research academia which gives us establish a university event uh journal entry which is going to be good we need to have the building be a university i thought it had to be level two we are going to build this in our capital now the reason we build a university in our capital here um actually we are building primarily over here so the reason you put them in the capital generally speaking or your biggest university in the capital is because it gives clout uh to the intelligentsia but we might even go ulema this run anyways uh but it does give clout to the intelligentsia however we are going to generally be in more need of qualifications here and since it only requires a university not a level two university and we don't mind having a single level one university here we will build it into breeze also notably as we are pulling all these pops out of this unused arable land which by the way a bunch of excess for persia anyways this is helping to give us more and more migration attraction in tabriz you know we have a 14 from unused arable land so as pops are de-peasanted this uh creates it makes the used arable land unused arable land and this increases migration attraction which is going to allow stuff you see we do have a mass migration it is from uh turkish uh and so they are migrating here and so this is uh going to be an aspect of persia that's uh you know similar to new world countries although not quite as pronounced allowing you to pull in a whole bunch of migration which is really why we want to get in russia's market because russia has a lot of pops and we can siphon off those pops um if they let us and so this is um the this should be different in the game you should be allowed to ask to join but we cannot ask to join while we have subjects uh even though we can accept an invitation which is just like a very strange thing but we're just you know we're chilling and hoping so we just finished lathes which is a very key tech because what it does is on several things it will give you access to the pm that is going to switch from being merchant guild owns to privately owned which is going to help us a lot uh for eating the clout of uh, the uh landowners here and helping to decrease this and instead handing it over to the industrialist and so this is going to be oh we see that even with our lower taxes it's not helping so we're actually going to increase taxes here but as i was saying uh this is going to give more ownership uh uh, over to the industrialist which is going to be good i believe we have dyes anyways and so we're going to do that lathes requires tools big nice for that and we will have to source some lead somewhere i think we will just uh build it ourselves notably we can build it in several places we're going to put one up in tabriz uh because that's where we're building a lot unless unless uh unless we have a glasswork somewhere that's not tabriz uh in uh, in theory we would want to have the lead where we have our glassworks but we have a glassworks there and a glassworks there 
there, neither of which can produce lead, and so we will just uh, stick with that for now. We are recruiting up a little bit the last barracks, and we are getting ready. We also have these naval bases coming up. It will take a little bit of a hot minute. I think we maybe do have enough troops that we can go after something like Oman, so we will look into kind of one last expansion here for the episode. So after decking on Oman, we do see we are going to have a bit of a problem that is going to be resurgent, uh, which is that we have a convoy's deficit. And so what we are going to do to resolve this is we are going to, of course, uh, build up uh, quite a bit of ports here, and we are also going to kind of kick some of this stuff back to the back of the queue uh, and let it is uh, the naval base as well, the military shipyards as well. And we are going to uh, first put in the shipyards and then put in a few more ports here uh, to help resolve this issue uh, that we are going to be having kind of coming on up. We also recognize that this war is going to be a little bit harder with less convoys. So we have put in, uh, we will put in rather, uh, a bunch of conscripts uh, and we will activate those conscripts, uh, which is going to kind of help us uh, to either get them to back down, which would kind of be preferable, uh, because they will have a lot of defense and we will be subjected to a malice and not have that much offense. Um, or, um, if they don't back down, the Lancers will help us out. And so uh, this is kind of how we've... And this is also going to, yeah, be another thing, is uh, how strong are they? I guess, well... I guess it's not too much military they're adding here, uh, 10 battalions, but it is a good thing that we have these conscripts coming, kind of coming on up, and we will be resolving this convoy issue. It's going to be present at the start of the war, we'll probably trip and stumble a little bit, uh, but, uh, you know, this will, we should be able to get Oman without too much difficulty here. Finally, after having finished our first, uh, level 11, uh, on the iron mines, in fact, going a little bit over, we can establish, uh, the, our iron mine company, which is going to give us a 14% throughput, which is going to be pretty nice, and 29% construction towards iron mines specifically. And so what we're going to do, what we're going to want to do, is we're going to want to start increasing the iron mines where we have placed you know our construction sectors and now we're going to bring in a bit of an expansion also coming up we have the very critical tech that we mentioned we were kind of prioritizing even at the very start of the game we have atmospheric engine coming up and so we'll be getting that in a few moments and we will also be banishing legacy slavery shortly here so atmospheric engine is a very key tech for several reasons one of which is going to help us to really increase the clout of the industrialists which is really going to be the party that we are leaning on um, you know to try and undermine the landowners here and sort of uh, you know liberalize our government although we might stay with the Shia Ulema uh, but what it will do is we will allow us to have a PM that's going to be really good on two fronts one uh, it nearly doubles the output in fact I think it doubles the output on most of the buildings just not the coal uh, in exchange for a little bit of coal usage you will be doubling the output on all the mines we will probably have to import coal for a short while uh, but we can maybe turn on one of these here we can maybe do this and then only turn on into breeze uh and maybe they can support all this but that's thing one uh it's going to be way more efficient you know making all of our mines uh put out a whole lot but also very critically it will switch them to privately own so now they are going to be capitalists which again are primarily industrialist and so this will help us out a whole lot instead of being merchant guild owned also capitalists give more money to the investment pool so we are expecting to see a pretty strong hitch up in reinvestment which will be pretty strong you know right now it's logging camps um expect to see this be replaced by iron mines as we move forward and also focus on the iron mines because we have access to it as a company and we're going to exhaust the wood relatively quickly for us here now for our next tech we kind of have a choice between water tube boiler and or actually let's just go mechanical tools but then we'll have a choice between water tube boiler and railways mechanical tools is going to give us access to steel tools which is going to be nice but also uh pulpite sulfoing uh or sorry uh, sulfide pulping, which is going to give us more uh, bureaucracy in our administrations. Notably, uh, we are not even on filing cabinets. We probably should have swapped to that a little bit earlier. But it's going to be much, much better there. Now, we don't have... I don't think we even have any sulfur. I think this is kind of our one... Nope, we definitely have sulfur. Yep, it's over here. So we are going to be building paper in one of these places, uh, you know, to help facilitate that probably here. So we'll put down paper and get ready to start making that transition as well uh, to using uh, a bunch of uh, the... What is it? Uh, generating more administration, probably leaning on, it in, on institutions. And we have legacy slavery kind of coming up 
on up in the down the barrel here. I think we're going to conclude the episode here. Um, what we have done is we've done a whole lot. Uh, you know, economically speaking, we have gone from uh, using a Mappy or having a Mappy score of 60 to having 85, both by getting off of traditionalism, which is a very, very bad law to start on, utilizing corn laws, um, and also um, by emphasizing you know in our research the very first tech we researched was stock exchange which allowed us to import a lot more profitably from russia which was part of our diplomatic plan but you know kind of coming on in in regards to our you know technology plan we did research academia we're mainly doing this for qualifications down the road uh, but we kind of uh, emphasized uh, an approach that would allow us to get atmospheric engine a little bit faster by half researching it and then going into cotton gin and lathes because we can't guarantee a tech spread on any particular thing and and so if it goes on intensive agriculture rather than atmospheric engine, it is better to get kind of some of the research in on atmospheric engine and then do the tier ones. Um, and very, very valuable tech. As far as the diplomacy goes, uh, we started by improving relations with both the Ottomans and Russia and not starting any fights. We've notably gotten to the point where we could join Russia's customs union. And in retrospect, we probably should have conquered only rather than tributarying some people. Uh, but this is okay. It'll still be a fine run. Russia might eventually invite us, but getting into their customs union would have been a pretty big boon um and so i did make a bit of a mistake here i think i think it would have been much better to get inside their customs union but instead we chose uh, a sort of path that would allow us to effectively get more construction because each of these guys gets 10 free construction and so since our own construction is so low it was a little bit appealing and this is kind of why we did it and we are effectively we have subjects we have one two three uh you know four five subjects who are each getting 10 free construction from the base construction and so that's effectively once we annex them doubling our construction maybe we will try and uh you know get inside a customs union after annexing everyone but that'll take you know 10 years from this point uh in order to be able to do that so maybe that's not that viable but um uh, and maybe we just want to expand the customs union ourselves but this is kind of what we've done um notably the corn laws was a big part of being able to reform everything so quickly um you know getting in laissez-faire and free trade on relatively easy basis along with landed voting and now you know uh the impending getting onto legacy see slavery which is going to be a nice stepping stone without having to do any sort of rev business notably we can do some rev business now that we have uh, landed voting which is going to help out a lot because this will probably allow us to have a legitimate government even if the landowners rev but this might not be necessary as far as further expansion goes we are going to you know set our sights on some other areas um, like indonesia and uh, south africa just because these areas are so strong but if we continue this run a little bit more what we will we will be focusing on kind of the plans of forming a pan-arabia uh sort of thing uh, so we will have to liberate iraq uh, maybe liberate syria look to incorporate all this then go after egypt and then have ourselves a nice looking thing i hope you enjoyed if you did feel free to like comment subscribe you know do the youtube algorithms thing it does help out uh really would like to uh try and get up to 10k subs before the end of the year so that would be exciting and other than that have a good day